What's up guys, welcome back to another YouTube video, a little bit of a virtual job shadow. Today in this video, I really wanted to touch on how to get proper skin tones when you're color grading your footage. Now, one of the biggest turnoffs when you're watching a film or when you're watching some type of video is when the skin tones are really, really off. So maybe they're too pink or they're too green. Something in there just doesn't add up, right? So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to look like Shrek and we also don't want to look like a tomato. So this video is specifically for showing you how to get the proper skin tones, the proper exposure, the proper color, the proper saturation, all of that. And uh, we're going to take a clip that looks like this. And today we're going to turn it into something that looks like this. So without wasting any more time, let's hop into Final Cut Pro and let's actually talk about how we do this instead of letting it be this mythical how to get perfect skin tones kind of world. Let's actually teach you how to do this. These rules apply to any skin tone, any ethnicity, whatever it might be, Caucasian, Mexican, Asian, African-American. These all apply and you have to use these moving forward with any interviews or people where there's skin in the frame. All right, so we're gonna hop into the first one here and we're gonna pick our hero frame. This seems like a good hero frame right here. He's not talking, he's looking straight at the camera and we can tell exactly what he's doing. Now, the first thing that I do when I go to color correct and color grade is I like to throw an adjustment layer on top. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back into our basic workflow setup and we are gonna go into our adjustment layers, throw on a base correction and call that good. Go back into the color tab here. And what I do with this adjustment layer is I find in my Easton Bennett presets right here under my effects, I pull the base correction onto that adjustment layer. And then I also drop a custom LUT onto that adjustment layer as well. Now I know a ton of different YouTubers and videographers and filmmakers, all these people that teach color grading, there's many different routes you can go. You can put the LUT on first, you can put the LUT on last. It really just depends on personal preference. I personally like to put the LUT on right away just so I have that base foundation and then I don't have to come back and fix everything after I put the LUT on at the end. So what I like to do is go into my custom LUT. The LUT I use is the Parker Wallbeck Canon um, little orange and teal LUT. It just takes away a little bit more of the magentas and the greens and moves it more into the yellow, red, cyan, blue spectrum. So it, it straightens that line out just a little bit. But before I do that, I like to go into this view mode, put it into the dual frame so I can only see these two. And then I like to go RGB parade on the right side. Now, since I've already colored this clip and delivered this video to the client, I already know that I like this LUT somewhere around 25%. So I never use the LUTs at 100%, but in this case, I use that 25%. That's what I thought looked good. So turn it off and on. You can see it doesn't make a huge difference at all. First thing I always do is pull down the shadows just so the blacks are right above that zero point. And you can already see it's made a whole world of difference just by bringing that black point down. Then I take the highlights and pull those up to about right there, just where this red peak point is almost touching 100. And uh, that should be this, you know, this little white shiny area on his forehead, our rim light here. That's what is touching up there in that peak area. And then I like to add just a little bit of saturation. This image is already pretty saturated, so we're not gonna add a ton, but you can see that over here in this vector scope. The closer this line gets to this R or the yellow or any of these letters, the more saturated it is going to be. So I like to keep it somewhere in the middle here, but not too much. And if we have to dial that back at the end, we can for sure do that. Now, the next step I like to do is to actually do my white balance. As you know, when you're shooting in camera, you don't always get your white balance perfect. So what I do is I have a draw mask and I draw around anything in the frame that is white. So in this instance, his shirt is very much white. Once you draw a draw mask around his shirt, it will seclude just his shirt. And you can see over here that, uh, the red bar, the green bar, and the blue bar are not even. That means that the whites are not properly white balanced. So in this case, since the red bar is higher, that means that it is a little bit too warm. So in this case, what I am gonna do is go back into my color wheels and I'm going to add some blue to the image. Now you can see the blue bar rising just a little bit. And now the red and the blue bar are even. Add some green in there in the middle, just so we can make these three bars equal. And about right there looks about right. You can drag this bar up and down in Final Cut to see how close you are. And that should about do it for the white balance. So you can see, turn off this draw mask. And when we turn off the color wheels on and off, that is the whole image color balanced, white balanced 
everything is proper. Next step I like to do is go into my color curves, add just a little bit more contrast, pull this black point down here, a slight S curve usually does the trick, and now you have a little bit more contrast in your image. That's generally what I'm doing in my curves tab is doing the slight S curve. Sometimes I bring the shadows up, but generally it is a slight S curve with the blacks lower and the highlights a little bit higher. And then I also, if I'm going for a more stylized look without using a LUT, I will use these curves, the red, green, and blue to add a little bit more of a stylist touch. So if I wanted to add some blues to the shadows, I would lift this up here and you can see in the image, his coat's getting a little bit blue and uh, so on and so forth, whatever you wanna do, that's what those color curves are for. After I've done the S curve and get the contrast how I want moving forward, I will hop back into my effects panel and click my other draw mask. So I have two draw masks on here. Once I have selected this draw mask, I'll actually draw a circle around his face. And this goes for obviously any skin color, just like we said before, when we were starting the video, it doesn't matter as long as you are drawing it around his face or her face, whoever it might be. And as you can see, this singles out just his skin. Now, what I like to do once I have that draw mask around the skin is to look at the vector scope over here on the left and decide which way it needs to go. So this white line right here is called the skin tone line or flesh line, something like that but that's what that's called. So you can see if it's too far to the left of this line, his skin is going to look green. And if it's too far to the right, his skin is going to look magenta. So how you fix this, and I generally, a rule of thumb, like to keep my skin tones just a little bit on the magenta side of that flesh line. So what I'm going to do is go into my hue saturation curves. I'm going to click hue versus hue, select my little eyedropper so I can put a point where his skin is at. And then you can see it puts a point right here on the hue versus hue. And then just push this up a little bit so you can see it is moving a little bit more towards magenta. A majority of the time when you're doing flesh and skin tones, your skin's generally okay. Unless you shoot Sony, Sony's known to, you know, throw out some different color skin tones. That's generally why I don't use them, but I've heard they're getting better, haven't worked with them, but that might be a case where you would need to do this. So in this case, his skin was pretty good. It probably would have been fine if I didn't do it, but it's that little bit of extra work that you put into it that makes your footage look that much better. After we have that done, we'll turn the draw mask off and you can see we'll go back in and the hue saturation, if I turn it on and off, look directly at his skin tone and you can see a slight change. That's a little bit too green. That's right about where I want it. A little bit too green right about where I want it. So next thing you'll do is you'll hop into your hue saturation curves, do any final adjustments that you want to make. After I do all my hue saturation adjustments and I think everything looks good, I will go down to my Luma versus saturation, which is another area where I can make a whole video on and put a point right here at the first vertical line and drag this far left point all the way down. Basically what this does is make sure my blacks are black. In this case, I don't want my blacks to be tinted blue or tinted green, even in the slightest, especially because his suit is black and it is going for more of the clean look. You want to make sure your blacks are black. So that's pretty much the color grade. We are gonna go and turn the effects on and off just so you can see what it looks like. That's off, this is on. And just like that, we have an image that we are ready to go and ready to work with. Now we're gonna do this one more time, super quick speed style on our next frame. We will click right here where his mouth is wide open, go back into our default, grab ourselves a base correction layer, drop that down right there, back into our color panel, check our phone for text messages, pull up our two frame window here that I personally like to do for color grading. Once again, drop the base correction on top of the base correction adjustment layer, drop the custom LUT on top of the base correction. The LUT is not actually necessary if you don't wanna use it. You can definitely get a good image without using the LUT, but I like how the LUT just gives a little bit of sauce to the footage. So generally I put that on about every video I use. Again, go down Parker Walbeck, Canon, Log1. All of this is shot in C-Log, 8-bit C-Log a while back, but I just finished this client project, so figured I'd use it as an example to teach you guys a little bit of skin tones. Next step we're gonna do is pull our shadows down to about right there, looks about good. 
pull our highlights up about right there looks good add some saturation into the image and then we'll go into our effects and click a draw mask here draw a mask around his white shirt now if you don't have anything white in your image you can always use gray um, or a form of gray generally in all of my images there's some type of white in them so usually i luck out if not you might have to guess but that is a very rare occasion that you're not going to have some white aspect in your image I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to the image add a little bit of green call that good turn off our draw mask we're going to go into our color curves panel do our slight s curve once again to about right there is probably good select our second draw mask draw a nice ring around mr brian bopri's face once you have that ring on there we are going to hop into our hue saturation again it's just looking a little bit too yellow greenish for me so i'm going to go hue versus hue click his face drag that up just a hair just a small slight little touch there to add some pink back into his face not a ton as you can see on off it just changes his face a little bit you can see on the vector scope on the left how much it moves that's all you need really just the slightest change just use that hue versus hue curve and it'll make the world of difference once we're done with the draw mask turn that off go back into our hue saturation curves now we're going to adjust some of the colors So now if we go back, our full image went from something that looks a little bit like this out of camera to now it looks like this. So that's the color grading process. Obviously that is super generic, that's super base color grading, but that's how you get the perfect skin tones in any video that you are doing. If we go back and forth here and start from the beginning with our custom LUT, this is what it looks like in building up to a custom LUT. And then we will go to our color wheels color curves, and then our hue saturation curves. So hopefully you guys got a little bit of information out of this video, how to perfect those skin tones so you're not getting a Barney or you're not getting a Shrek and your skins actually look good. If you guys did enjoy these videos, you might enjoy the two videos over here. One of them is a Final Cut tutorial. So if you are a Final Cut user like myself and you wanna learn a little bit more on Final Cut, this video on top is going to help you a ton. And then if you're looking for another virtual job shadow, this one on bottom is something that you should look at if you are trying to up your interview game. Thank you guys again for watching. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And I will see you next week with a client breakdown video. If you have any further questions, please let me know.